Well, hello and welcome to the Widow's Oil, to our second video. In the last video, I erroneously spoke um, said that if I claim that um, the church or believers or the Israel of God, then people will say to me that I am, am a proponent of dispensationalism, but that I spoke erroneously. I should have rather said that um, they will accuse me of displacement theology. So I thought, let us have a look uh, and just quickly discuss what is meant by um, replacement theology and um, displacement theology. And I don't want to go and make it all technical and theological because all of you are able to use Google and to um, research these things for, for, for yourself. So I'm just doing it to um, give context and then to go ahead and see, um, is it true that I am, you know, guilty of uh, replacement theology or displacement theology? Okay, so dispensationalism is just a, a way um, people see um, people that that study, especially um, eschatology. They see uh, different dispensations in which um, God worked with mankind. For example, a well-known one is the Mosaic um, time period where. Israel, the physical Israel was um, under the Mosaic law. And then we all often hear of the period or dispensation of grace, um, or they speak of um, the church age. So these are different time periods in which we see different what, things happening. Um, and that is what is called dispensationalism. Um, then replacement theology is basically the idea that the church, uh, the, the body of Christ, the church replaced physical Israel. So God worked with Israel um, in the old covenant and then it was replaced by the church in the new covenant. But... Um, I'd like to show you how I see um, God's working with us and that it's not right to say that I am saying that the church um, is replacing Israel. Um, now, of course, I will be accused of it, but it doesn't matter. It's not that I'm trying to uh, prove anything. I just, um, I want to have you understand um, how I view the scriptures. So if I can share with you my screen here, then um, I'd like to go again to Galatians 3, where we were last time. And I want to look at how the covenant with Abram was made. What was it like? Now, I have here also Revelation 13 verse 8. And it, it, it reads, uh, um, well, the main part that I'd like you to look there is the part that, that reads the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So I just want to remind us that scripture says that Jesus Christ was slain, slain from the beginning, from the foundation of the world. Um, and, and we know that scripture says the Lord calls those things that are not as if they were. So um, that is an important thing to, to think about when we look here at Galatians 3. And there are two specific um, highlighted points here that I want to look at and then just briefly 
summarize what I see in these things and then just draw it all together um, and, and bring it um, along with the fact of dispensationalism and replacement theology, how that all goes together. So last time we 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 wrote we um discussed um how when the church having begun in the spirit uh tries to be be perfected by the flesh now that is not a new issue it's been it what happened in paul's time and it's happening right now again so it is a judaizing is a problem that was then and now and legalism the same thing it is something we constantly battle against um, now I want to look here at Galatians 3 um, from verse 7 I want to read read that and it says therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abram beforehand saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abram. So highlighted there, it says the scripture preached the gospel to Abram beforehand. So I want to point out the fact that the scripture actually teaches that Abram, the gospel was preached to Abram, which is something that's not very well known. But way before the Mosaic law, it says here, the, the scripture preached the gospel to Abram. So I'd just like you to receive that part of scripture, that scripture preached the gospel to Abram beforehand. Right. And then down here, it says the changeless promise. And then it says the following. Brethren, brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now to Abram and his seed were the promises made. He does not say unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed who is Christ. And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise, but God gave it to Abram by promise. Okay, so um, we see there that the point is made that the seed that we're looking for is Christ, and that this covenant or this inheritance was given by promise. But that is not what I want us to focus on. I want us to focus on the fact that it says the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ. It speaks of a covenant with Abram that was confirmed in Christ. So that's the second quite amazing bit that I want us to see is that this covenant was made in Christ. Uh, so Abram had the gospel preached to him and the covenant was made in Christ. Um, so why I'm showing you this is to show you that way before, 430 years even before the Mosaic law, we have the covenant, the covenant that Jesus um, came to confirm um, when you walk the earth the what we call the new covenant was made with Abram and it's sometimes not so well understood that we we think of these things namely that we call what Jesus brought a new covenant but it was actually him confirming this covenant the covenant made in faith 
And so that is why to say that when we say that that God's people, the believers in the Lord, um, they are the Israel of God. Um, it, then to say that it is replacement theology and that we are taking the place of, of modern day Israel or of the Jews today um, and then being called, oh, it's replacement theology. That is wrong because, number one, as we saw in the first video, scripture teaches that the Israel of God is the believers, the body of Christ. Um, and then it's not a matter of replacing. This covenant was from the beginning God's plan. It was from the beginning God's plan that we would be saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And it was from the beginning his plan that it would be from all nations, tribes, and tongues. So for me to say that the church is not a replacement, it's not a plan B, um, it's, it's just a continuation of what God planned in any case, then makes it that it would be wrong to say it's, the, it's replacement theology. And I don't like those labels because what happens is just like people use the label of racism um, to stop all discussion of anything reasonable and people then act unreasonable and they shut people up using labels in the same way we are doing this to each other by labeling each other, by saying, oh, you know, that is disp dispensational theology or that is replacement theology. And then the ears shut and nobody listens to each other. And um, in that way, the enemy is able to divide us. Now, one last thing I want to say today is that I read the, the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, and they, to me, reading them, I could see that the, the way the church explained things was very cloudy. Um, the, the way they explained it was that the people were under the law and then Jesus came and everything changed and it was this totally new thing. But if you read the Dead Sea Scrolls, you can actually see that those that were of the faithful remnant, they had the teachings that eventually became the Christianity that we know. Those things were in a proto um type of a stage they 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 still had I'm not saying that the that the people that wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls were the um the remnant or anything but I but I'm saying that they for example um from reading those things you can see that the Revelations and the understandings already were with those that were holding on to the truth, whereas the Pharisees had totally um, apostatized and and they were totally um, moved away from the truth. So that to me is another witness of the fact that the covenant that... Um, God the Father has with us in Jesus Christ was already um, from the time of Abraham and it's gone right through. It's just that at the time of Jesus, many of, of the, um, or a great number of those that were, were un, in unbelief were broken off from the olive tree and that people from outside, the so-called Gentiles, were grafted in. So it's still the same church, 
Stephen called it the church in the wilderness. Um, and that is very, very important in understanding things because it's this misunderstanding about the covenant and about the Israel of God that leads to um, this theology we have, which is causing great destruction and havoc in our world today. And so I would like you to go and think about Galatians 3 and about how Abram, like us, had the gospel preached to him and how Abram um, was saved in Christ. And Jesus himself um, said in, in John 8, he said that, you know, Abram was happy to see his day. So Abram had understood, maybe not into the level that we do, but um, but he understood the gospel and he understood about the Messiah, the coming Messiah.